it's a tough decision to have to make because for a high-spec flare petrol version of the new Citroen C4, you could get the entry-level EC4 full electric vehicle with a range of just over 300 kilometers officially. This is a 1.2 eight-speed automatic version with all the bells and all the whistles. It's a brand new model here in Europe and on the Irish market. And as far as I know, this is the first Irish video. So welcome if you're just checking it out with Irish prices and specs. I haven't seen a Citroen with a boot spoiler this big in quite a long time. And I love the new steering wheel. It kind of reminds me of the Citroens of the 70s and 80s. Although this one doesn't have a raisable suspension. And there's the little pockets as always around the suspension of the car, those Citroen air pockets that make the ride more comfortable. And I can verify they work, they're good. This car is sitting on black, which looks pretty stealthy with the black paint, 18 inch alloy wheels, Citroen's LED vision headlights. In some angles I look at this, it reminds me of a Civic Type R. Unmistakably Citroen around the front because it's a big chrome double grille. Citroen have officially put it into the C segment of cars, but also describe it as a crossover, more of a hatchback crossover, however. And the thing that I like about hatchback crossovers is they have kind of a, a coupe style going on. Think of the Cooper Fermentor that we've had recently on the channel. If this is the next cycle of where we're going with crossovers, I am on board. More of those air pockets down here and those plastic bits cover the inside of the door, which means you keep your all important trousers or jeans dry, not mucky. It's a good little feature to have. They've simplified the two trims down to feel and flare, and then you can get a feel pack and a flare pack. This is a flare, so it's at the top of the range, privacy glass on the back, privacy in the rear window, LED red light clusters, and particularly at this angle, it really looks like the Honda Civic. I'm not quite sure why Citroen would put so much black on the car and then leave chrome strips along the side, but maybe that's easily rectified. It's this light cluster here that just screams Type R, combined with that spoiler. There's a problem with this spoiler, I'll explain in a second. Your boot is kind of your average hatchback size boot. The shelf can be dropped to give you a slightly deeper. It fits things like scooters for kids and all that stuff in easily. And they have left a spare wheel tucked away in the well, which is very welcome. It's not the lightest boot, so you might want to consider an electric tailgate. You can get it, but it's optional. The seats, I can promise you, really are not a gimmick. When you sit into them and you feel the extra layer of cushion, it's like a really nice mattress. They have left those fiddly zips on the eyes of fix. If you're only opening them to put in seats once and forever, then okay. But if you're not, they'll be a little bit annoying. You really would be surprised at how many car companies do not give you air vents and charging in the back or charge extra for it. I'm glad to report they are here and present in the new C4. As are pockets on the back of the driver and passenger seats. Head height is okay. Now the sloping design does come down into this area a little bit. So taller passengers, particularly in the middle seat, might get a little bit uncomfortable. There's no armrest either in the car but there's a good 70 30 split on this seat if you want to drop them down and give yourself more space so i think in general people will be happy enough it's cozy three people on a longer journey might be that comfortable particularly because you've got to straddle this part you can't really put your feet on the middle hump and if you have anything bigger than a size seven mine are a lot bigger obviously uh, you're not going to fit it between the seat and the back of that center piece so yeah, you're going to be knocking knees and knees hitting of me and all that kind of moaning going on. If it's a two-person thing you're after, though, with the odd occasional middle passenger, I think it'll do all right. Uh, similarly, you'll get two child seats into the back. No problems. I would like to see the doors open a little bit wider, though. A little bit tight. Up front, if it's possible, the seats actually get a bit more comfortable. The C4 has physical buttons for loads of things, I'm happy to report, including a home button, a shortcut button to get to a lot of the car features is also there. You've got a manual knob for your aircon, a dual zone, there is wireless charging, USB-C and USB ports, there's both options, there's four in the car in total. If you do want to use Android or CarPlay, you're going to need a USB-C cable for your phone. That's the only thing. Uh, there's a little kind of storage area down here also. Nice deep coffee cups, well done section. They're a great size. And you can cover that up as well if you've got something valuable by using that slide. I love the steering wheel. 
it's it's like evolution of the last ones and something like the C5 Aircross, but equally it does kind of just remind me of, there's a slight nod to the Citroens of old. You'll get cruise control depending on what model you go for, all adjustable from your steering wheel buttons. This one has a pop-up heads up display. It's not projected onto the windscreen. It is a physical thing that slides up, but it's good. Gives you nice bits of information. How many cars have you been in that have a pull-out drawer? Because the C4 does, and not only that, there's an extra layer here that you pop and you can put an iPad. It comes with an iPad holder, by the way. You slot your iPad in there, it sits up there, and suddenly your C4 is now a car cinema. And I think that's deadly. That's a 10 inch screen, by the way, it comes as standard. 10 inch wide across, absolutely, but it's quite shallow. Half of it's taken up with two air vents. So it's not the whole way down. And it's not quite floating, but it is floating, if you get me. It's kind of havo havo. And this screen here for your instruments is backlit by a really bright white LED light. And I'd say that looks really good at night time. Something that I can categorically say is the stop start button in the car, particularly to turn the car off, hold it down for long enough, because the engine is actually that quiet that I keep getting out of this car having not turned off the engine, and I think it is, and then you've got to get back in all over again. So that is a bit of a pain. I'm very familiar with this eight-speed gearbox because I've driven it in the Opals and in the Peugeots, and it's generally very smooth. You'll get the odd little shudder jump in traffic, but generally very, very well behaved. And because it's an eight-speed, you know, things like motorway speed and stuff like that, you really are cruising along and the car is barely turning over. Steering wheel around town, steering in general in the car, obviously not just the steering wheel, is very, very light. Like you can control it with one finger if you're parking somewhere in a shopping centre car park. I was in Blanchestown uh, and it, it was very, very easy to drive. Weekend shopping, Blanchestown, absolute nightmare, but it was made easier by the fact that how light the steering was. Indicator is quite loud though, you won't forget that it's on. All models of the C4 get frontal collision avoidance as standard. That can also spot pedestrians and things like that. And you've got dash cams on board in the vehicle. If you go for the flare model, you then get blind spot in your mirrors, amongst other things, rear traffic cross monitoring. Uh, the camera is weird. It's very long in terms of its scope, but actually is quite disorientating because things appear much further away than they are. So that's something that you have to get used to. It's very quiet, you know, you really, like I'm in sixth gear now, it's 66 kilometers an hour. Very, very quiet, very, very refined. You know, the, the biggest noise really is actually out of the tires, but it is quite comfortable on bumps, on Irish back country roads. It really is very, very forgiving. And you can notice that extra bit of Citroen effort that has got into the suspension that is what they've been famous for for absolute decades decades and decades and i'm glad to see like it's difficult to make models that are all effectively based on one car and make them your own under a brand and i think citroen just like ds have actually managed to do that with this it does ride differently to some of the other cars from peugeot and opal other safety features include a driver fatigue alert system. It'll read road signs for you. It's good like that. It always feels like you've got an extra friend keeping an eye out for you. Now, what all those safety aids can't hide is the fact that that boot spoiler, as cool as it looks, all you can see when you look at that rearview mirror is a boot spoiler. And if you've got children's seats, the tops of those seats also restrict your view. So that window, for design purposes, gets quite small. There's also a highway driver assist with adaptive cruise control that will keep up and slow down with cars. Uh, I can only assume that means, because I haven't got to test it yet, because this really is just a first look at the car, is where it will obey speed sign changes on a motorway. Driven in some cars, it's very, very good, and it really does keep that license of yours extra clean. I really think it's absolutely gorgeous to look at. I don't know about you, I mean, leave a comment below with your thoughts on 
the looks of it. I think they've got it spot on. The main difference you'll notice with the electric version of the car is that there's just extra bits of blue where the uh, air pockets are around the grille and the side of the car and there's a little badge to display an E logo, but that's it. So I like that, you know, the electric version of the car doesn't look massively different. Uh, to this petrol version of it, which I think is probably still going to be the sweet spot for a lot of people. Uh, yes, there's definitely a great option in the electric one. It'll be a 50 kilowatt hour battery, 100 kilowatt charging, all that positive stuff. But when you can get into a really well spec petrol that will do somewhere between six and seven liters for 100 kilometers, and will do up to 700 kilometers on a full tank then it's a lot to consider and while it's nice to have the EV option I think a lot of people might go for this 1.2 130 brake horsepower petrol version of the car because it probably is the sweet spot for me anyway a little bit jerky there now pulling away from a set of traffic lights but at least down the pub you'll be able to say to your mate Frank or Fidelma has your car got progressive hydraulic cushions because mine does. And how cool will that feel? It also doesn't suffer from body roll because it's not quite as high up as something like a full-on crossover. So there's still a bit of driver enjoyment there. It's not quite as sharp as the Fermentor. Uh, you do feel that extra cushion is making it a little bit soft. But actually, the handling, you'll notice if you drive one of these style of cars, the handling is a little bit better than what you'll get from something like a Qashqai. So in case you're wondering, Obsidian Black Metallic, that's the colour of this car if you want to order this one. Prices start from just over €24,000, there's a whole heap of engines, so full electric, there's petrol, there's diesel, there's 100 brake horsepower, there's 130 brake horsepower, there's 115 brake horsepower, manual and EAT8 automatic gearboxes which are 8 speed. So there's so many options in this car, whichever one you want and not as long as it's black, there is a C4 for you. It's an interesting car, it's well priced, it's good looking, uh, yeah the visibility at the back, if this as I said earlier on the video is where crossover slash hatchback styling is going then I'm very very happy with it. If you have any comments or questions about the C4 please do leave them below and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.